Learning objectives include what are endospores and how they're formed, and also what are the advantages of having them. Endospores are specialized resting cells. They are highly durable, dehydrated forms of bacteria, and they're formed, of course, inside the bacterium. And the advantage of, uh, for the bacterium to have them is that the bacteria can survive under extreme conditions of temperature, dehydration, even under radiation, and even in a toxic environment. So these are the advantages of having this endospore. Not all bacteria can have these endospores. There are mostly gram-positive bacteria, like Clostridium and Bacillus. These are two species that are most commonly that have endospores in them. Although there is one gram-negative bacteria, Coxiella burnetii, that also has them. The formation of spores is called sporulation or sporogenesis. This is the picture of a spore. As you can see, that this, there is an outer layer which we call exosporium. And then the second inner layer is the spore coat. And then a third layer, which is slightly uh, off white here, is the cortex. Then after the cortex, if you're going from outside, inside, is the core wall. And then there is a core in which the nucleus, like uh, the DNA and ribosomes are, are packed or present. Let's see uh, what these different layers have. Exosporium is basically, it's very thin and a delicate membrane, delicate covering. The spore coat, which is the second inner layer, it is thick, composed of many protein layers. It is resistant to chemicals, various chemicals, and also it contains enzymes for germination. Because the spore under good conditions, under conditions that are favorable for the bacterium, has to germinate, has to adopt the environment for growth, which we call germination. So these enzymes are contained in the spore coat. Then next layer is cortex, which basically is a peptidoglycan layer, which is equivalent to a cell wall. Then there's a spore cell wall or core wall, which surrounds the protoplast or, or the uh, spore core. And core, of course, contains nucleoid and the ribosomes. Here is the process of sporogenesis. What happens is that DNA replicates in the cell, and then the, cyt the cytoplasm, basically, which is a plasma membrane, it forms an ingrowth. And this ingrowth becomes a kind of spore septum. And then in the second step, this spore septum assumes a double layer. Okay? And then within this double layer, uh, peptidoglycan layer is laid down. And then the spore is completed when a thick spore coat is formed afterwards. Afterwards, uh, when this thick spore coat is formed, the bacterium disintegrates. This DNA, which is, of course, a, a copy of this DNA as well, it is degraded, and the rest of the spore is also dis disintegrated, releasing the spore in the environment. And the spore is what is the most resistant thing to kill. This uh, slide shows various properties of uh, uh, the endospore. That The core has a substance called dipiclonic acid, complex with calcium. And this is part that it stabilizes the DNA. Similarly, there is another um, substance, which is small acid-soluble acid-binding proteins. And these also protect DNA from heat, desiccation, and from various chemicals. Now, location of and size of the spore is also very useful for bacterial identification. The location of the spore could be central. It could be at the very end, which is terminal. It could be subterminal. It could be bulging. See that here, the, the spore is kind of bulging, sw swollen or larger than the size of the rest of the, the bacterium. Or it could be non-bulging. So these are various kinds of uh, spores and their positions that uh, help us determining the species. Like this here, which is called a drumstick appearance. 
it is it is a, a very useful character of uh, Clostridium tetani, the drumstick bacterium, very easy to identify. When conditions are favorable, same spore um, gets back to life. It passes through these three different stages, activation, then germination, and then outgrowth. During activation, um, spore prepares itself for germination, and this uh, stimulus for activation could be provided by the heat. During germinations, the spore starts swelling, and it then loses its outer coat and becomes metabolically active. And then it acquires nut nutrients from the environment and start growing, which is called outgrowth. Spores are very resistant, as I mentioned earlier, that extreme temperatures uh, cannot kill them. So sterilization is also a problem with those bacteria that form endospores. There is a technique called autoclaving where you increase the, the, uh, the heat pressure by creating steam with the 15 PSI. And if the, these, these spores, they stay there under these conditions for 20 minutes, the temperature achieved is 121 degrees Celsius. And this is enough to kill those spores. Sugar solutions, however, cannot be sterilized at this temperature because those molecules of uh, the molecules of the sugar uh, get damaged at this temperature. So there is another technique, what we call tindalization, where the sugar solution is prepared and it is boiled on day one, boiling and then cooling. Boiling would kill all the germinative forms present in the sugar solution, but Essentially, boiling does not kill uh, spores. But when you incubate uh, this boiled and cooled solution at 37 degrees Celsius, all those spores would start germinating. So spores would convert themselves into vegetative forms, and it is easy uh, to kill these vegetative forms. So next day, you do the same process that was done on the day first you boil the solution, and all those vegetative farms would be killed. So this is, tindalization is another alternative uh, to autoclaving for those substances that can get degraded or damaged at this temperature, 100 degree, 121 degrees Celsius. In summary, spore is a specialized cell. It forms when there is um, scarcity, of the nutrients or the, the, the uh, conditions, environmental conditions are not very friendly for the bacteria. It is extremely resistant to conditions like temperature, toxic chemicals, radiations and all that. And it is of course forms within the cell. When conditions become favorable for the bacterium to grow, it again comes back to life. 